Hello, viewers. This is the prosthetics on Friday to look at various implant issues and also solve uh, various side effects. This is our first uh, session of 2022, and today we are going to talk about things to consider for full mouth rehabilitation. And our speaker today is Professor Park Chan Jing of Gangneung Wonju National University. It's been already two years uh, where we talked about screw loosening of the implant abutment. Thank you for joining us again. So could you give uh, maybe a summary of today's uh, lecture? First of all, I'd like to thank Austin for giving me this opportunity. And above all, I'm really honored to be here together with uh, my mentor, Professor Jo in -ho today. So today, what I'm going to talk about is when it's not about like doing one plan because of uh, wear or abrasion. Uh, it's more about full mouth rehabilitation. So for that case, uh, what you need to take into consideration because it's a uh, full mouth and not just a single or two uh, implant uh, placement. Yes, thank you. So for full mouth rehabilitation, what are things to be considered? Um, so uh, I look forward to your lecture. Now, on Denol's site, if you are joining us, please, on the right uh, of the uh, your uh, screen, you will see the chat box. So please post your questions there. And if we answer your questions, we'll give you Starbucks coffee coupon. We look forward to your participation. And with that, we will start with Professor Park's lecture. Hello, as introduced, I'm Park Chan Jing from Gangneung Wonju National University. As was introduced, I'm going to talk about things to consider for implant restoration for in case of full mouth rehabilitation because of uh, teeth uh, wear and abrasion. So this is one case, it's an old case, and you can see the occlusal uh, plane is, there's waves, and there's uh, fixtures used, not much of functions, and you see a lot of fractures and wears. So this is a case where you need a full mouth rehabilitation. So this is after rehabilitation, it's been a while. So in terms of aesthetics and materials, so there are things uh, from today's view uh, lacking. And uh, you see in case of the full mouth rehabilitation, we use uh, implant. You need to have a long-term view. There's a lot of changes and prosthetic, prosthetic materials that could have uh, perio issues or material-related issues. So you have to take a lot of care. So from this to this, Basically, what are the basic concepts and approaches that you need to think about? That's what I want to share with you today. So this is from textbook. If you do fixed restoration in terms of treatment strategy, this is something you know establishment of horizontal and vertical relationship is important. You also need stable occlusal stop, and uh, you need to have a harmonious interior guidance and restoration of collapsed occlusion and masticatory function needs to be comfortable to the patient. So this is something you already know. In terms of uh, how you do rehabilitation, are you going to use fixed or removable? So using, you know, implants uh, for full amount, you could 
do you know fix or removable, but uh, prognosis will be different and also cost-wise. Uh, everybody knows fix is uh, more um, efficacious, but if you inevitably have to opt for removable, what's written here is something that becomes challenging. So with, um, but uh, using implant, uh, simply put, it can be overcome. So, but uh, removal is not something I'm going to talk about today, so I'll skip that. So these are the five uh, things you need to be uh, mindful. Uh, what is most important is that overall stable stuff is needed. What I always emphasize is the MI position. So the stable stuff on all teeth when condyles are in centric relations is very uh, important. So stable stuff uh, is not at the same timing on the both sides. Uh, it needs to go on the uh, with the uh, MI, and you also need a lot of harmony in this collusion, and that there should be no interference. Now, this is treatment procedure, and this is sort of showing the flow, overall flow. So there are basically three steps, diagnostic step, treatment phase, and then the maintenance phase. And for each phase, you need a lot of uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, so that's what I'm going to focus on today. So this will be all kind of the summary slide for today. So from the diagnostic phase, these are the things to be considered and the treatment phase, uh, VDCR provisionalization is needed, and the maintenance phase, occlusal stability, and other things are needed. And through this, you need to increase longevity, and you also uh, need to be very thorough in doing this um, and uh, achieve patient's uh, compliance. So conceptually, it's very kind of um, given things. Uh, so uh, these are the four things I think is very important. So let's start with the first one. I think the most important thing in the anterior uh, or full mouth rehabilitation is, although it says full mouth, mostly cases there are teeth that need to be removed or teeth that are uh, missing. And that's why you need a lot of uh, posterior support. This is a key concept. So this is one case. So overall, uh, they are uh, teeth, but because of period uh, problem, you have to extract, and there are four remaining uh, on the uh, up on the upper side and few on the uh, lower side. So you see uh, vertical dimension, but it's still uh, maintained. So, you know, rehabilitation kind of becomes uh, easier. So what needs to be considered is that even removable, you can create as powerful as uh, fixed ones, and with the fixed bridge on, uh, with the uh, use of few imprints, you can easily solve a lot of challenges here. So, although it's yes, full mouth rehabilitation, but the easiest and simplest uh, rehabilitation, rehabilitation. So it's a uh, use removable and fix are both used, but uh, for patient, it's closer to kind of use like using removable. So it's an easy case. So posterior support. Now you have like this uh, categories, and this is called Eichner uh, index. I don't know I'm, whether I'm pronouncing this correct, but this kind of the the uh, posterior support uh, index he uh, created. So you have the occlusal uh, contact and zones, and you have the one pairs of the upper and lower side of the premolars and the molars also pairs on both sides. So two premolars and two molars, if you have that zones, uh, pairs are opposing, and in total four is more favorable for any type of restoration. So using implant, category B is created into category A, that is the uh, making things uh, simple. So category B, B occlusal support zone is one, two, three, and you also have category C. So uh, these are the overall index that you could use. So from category B, using the implants, Posterior support, if you can have in four zones, then you can have restoration that is in the category A. That is how you can interpret this index. 
So if you do that, the key thing is the in the rehabilitation uh, content, the link good foundation is important. So premolar and the molar zone, one pair posterior support on both sides uh, needs to be there and needs to be uh, maintained or the condition like that needs to be created using implant. That is very important. Second concept is occlusal plane. So this is something you probably also learned in school. And if you see this patient now on the MI uh, status, the vertical and uh, you know horizontal status, you know vertically there is a lot of collapse, and you cannot really tell where is the, the occlusal plane needs to be done because there is a protrusion and there is a lot of imbalance. So textbook approach, I believe here is important. So you know all this, so I'll just uh, go very uh, quickly. So Eletragos line and Kemper's line is the standard. Another reference is parotid papillar. Uh, there should be a certain distance from the occlusal plane. And for hemolar notch incisive papillar plane, this it is hemolar notch on both sides, and this uh, kind of um, inclination uh, from the center. So this how. The teeth has uh, remained, and teeth are inclined, are distorted, and uh, by having a stable landmark that will not change that much, uh, you can set it as a reference. And what is important is that you have to look at different standards, not follow one indice or standards, but uh, you know look at different things. So you do assessment on the uh, orally, and you create uh, models to uh, uh, evaluate. And also on the tongue, when tongue is resting, you see uh, the height being occlusal, uh, similar to occlusal plane, again from the textbook, and also commercial of uh, lips uh, is something you also reference a lot. And also, uh, senator groove, if there's a clench, then on the buckle inside, uh, boxinator uh, groove uh, do exist. Uh, so, you know, but some do not have that. So if you can observe that inside the mouth, uh, using that the uh, distorted occlusal uh, plane can be kind of guessed. So as I said, Again, it's not once that uh, or one thing solves uh, all. All different indices and standards all needs to be uh, pulled together to help you get the answers to how to restore the occlusal plane. So the are tools you could use now. In the tunnel series. This is the occlusal plane that uh, tool can be used, and as a tool, on um, this both sides symmetrically on the central line, the same height. Uh, there could be some uh, evenness, and tools can give you, and there could be also a occlusal plane analyzer, a plate. So it's not something you uh, create. It's a, in the articulator, you make an assessment, and the technicians uh, create based on your assessment. And through such a process, um, you know, uh, a lot of things can be done if you use the tools. Can I ask you a question? Now, here you use occlusal plane analyzer, and this occlusal plane analyzer, be it uh, natural teeth or full denture, can you use them for both cases? Yes. I just talked about, you know, occlusal plane analyzer, and that is very much articulate uh, uh, focus, and it uh, can be. Uh, if it's used by, by pen, uh, you can uh, use it. But if you exist as just tool, then even on the mock model, there are landmarks, so it's very easy to use. Now, then, on the live chat, uh, let's uh, answer some questions.
Now I've been waiting for this、uh, lecture series, and I look for today's、uh, lecture. It says Endo Kim as ID, so he's probably doing Endo a lot. Thank you for that、uh, encouraging comment. And also,、uh, you know,、uh, good to see this series again. And Professor Park Chanji, nice to see you. Hope you will、uh, do a lot of、uh, lectures. I think he must be your fan. And then we have a question.、Uh, then tweet sixty nine asked, increasing the Okujo plan, the articulator. How much function does it have? Semi-adjustable articulator is that a must? Well, basically, now I do understand why you are asking that.、Uh, it should be same as your uh, head uh, uh, size. So even semi-adjustables or average movement articulators have. You know the head size. I mean, head size、uh, sounds strange, but、uh, head size articulator is sufficient、uh, because adjustment you have to do orally anyways. So WhatsApp or creating prosthesis will be all okay. So for full mouth rehabilitation,、uh, articulator needs to be have a very good functions. That is our preconceived notion. But you are saying that if it's semi adjustable one, then it's、uh, more than sufficient. Yes, I hope that answered the question. Thank you for that、uh, question. And then we sixty ninth. Thank you for that question, and we'll send you the coffee coupon, and also others who have given a lot of good encouraging comment. Comment. Thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions or comment, please post them. We'll try to answer them as much as possible. Please continue. Yes, thank you very much. Now, in the occlusal plane, the summary will be、um, evaluation.、Uh, use it. Your school knowledge you have、uh, learned from school, and kind of unique occlusal、uh, uh, plane.、Uh, it's not. It's not. It's more like a mechanical knowledge you need to uh, consider. Uh, so, but、uh, the base of、uh, assessment needs to be come from various sources,、uh, multiple indexes, standards, assessor. But symmetrical is very important because it's important in terms of、uh, function. Uh, symmetric being symmetrical is、uh, key. And on the posterior side,、uh, what you need to be mindful is that you know something that you, some people do not think much about. The occlusal plane becomes、uh, lower on the back side.、Uh, if for for full mal rehabilitation, could result in porcelain fractures. Now, on the if you are six and seven missing. Then、uh, you leave that be, and then think about crucial、uh, plane. I can understand that because you have to remove implant and create new. So you just let what is already there be. So if the VD is increased, then on the posterior it goes a bit lower. Then on the posterior side, you have to always adjust. Otherwise, you have a lot of porcelain、uh, fracture. So if you see the bottom.、Uh, Uh, image,、uh, you have all the fractures,、uh, and on the posterior there's the implant. So you have to be watch and out for that. Now let's talk about the、uh, VD now, and this might be a tricky area. So I've tried to keep it simple as much as possible. This is a case, and if you see rehabilitation looks very challenging. We're using removable or fixed. It's also、uh, tricky, and after there's a loss, there was no restoration for a long time, and there is also a wear of other teeth, so、uh, extrusion might be inevitable. So there are indices you can use for making decisions. So you have the methods up for evaluation column, and you see whether there is a posterior support, and so a way for making evaluation, and what is、uh, normal or not, rather than looking. 
looking at from that perspective, what I would like to say, aesthetics things, uh, you know, VD, how much needs to be aesthetically. And secondly, the VD needs to be comfortable for the patient. If you focus on the two, it will be good. So how much of the increase, the minimum might be good, but uh, in terms of rehabilitation or long term, minimum might not be uh, good because of the wear. So being sufficient might be better. So if you have that uh, range in mindful, then aesthetic support. And so again, posterior support is important. And plus, uh, patient being comfortable with it is also key. So depending on, you know, scholars, uh, there are different criteria. Uh, there is no one right answer. The clinician makes uh, uh, determination based on his or her preference. Uh, so on the right side, these are some of the ranges that you could be taking as a reference. So what I would like to say is this is like Turner and Mazzilian's, um article. Uh, the categories is for um, easy reference. And what is important is that in for full mouth rehabilitation, what is lost on the posterior is important. And that determines whether implant can be uh, if effective and whether it's a space for uh, rehabilitation. What is important is if there's a for rehabilitation patient, as the occlusion is collapsed, they don't come immediately. Some come uh, kind of uh, late and you know there's a lot of wear so you have to be considerate of that and as you can see there's a loss on the uh, posterior side and you see a lot of uh, wear here so there's a excessive uh, wear happening very quickly and VD is uh, needs to be recovered so because uh, uh, and you have to think about the uh, space, whether it's available. So, you know, category here is not important. There's loss on the posterior, and then you have to increase every D. Then mechanically, the muscles uh, has been already compliant. That means a long-term temporization, and you have to monitor. Rather than such a mechanical approach, be more flexible. After loss, uh, what is happening in terms of where if it happens very quickly, excessively, then you don't have to wait a lot. There's a quick compliance. So sorting this cases out um, would uh, make the case less challenging. But the key, uh, more challenging case will be number two and three cases. Uh, so there's a bit of wear for number two category, but there is a limited space available. Then aesthetics wise, if it's okay, then using the current VD will be okay or slight increase of VD will do. On the aesthetic zone, if there's a demand, then slight um, increase uh, would do. So again, from the VD uh, side, maintain. But aesthetically, in the criteria I talked about, on the anterior height, it might be lower. But anyway, restoration would be possible. So for number one and number two, number two is a bit tricky than number one, but uh, patient's compliance is still easy. But for number three category, so there's a tease, but a lot of wear for long-term wear. So here you have to a lot of VD increase, otherwise you will not get rehabilitation. So you need sufficient VD increase. So on the articulator, you make an evaluation and make a decision. And you also need a lot of long-term temporization period. So you have to monitor the patient, whether uh, the patient becomes compliant and with the temporization as uh, it's uh, it needs to be lengthy temporization, uh, you know, it's going to be tricky. But uh, time factor is important because category one, two, three are not, you know, like really black and white. Uh, they come uh, very simple case, but they came too late. So requiring full mouth rehabilitation. So it's a 
mixture of uh, different categories for patients. So you have to watch the patient conditions carefully. So the, another uh, case, if you do evaluation, there are different evaluation steps. And based on that, again, temporization is a must. Uh, if you are not sure, then the increase based on the articulator uh, roughly you, of course, at the later stage, uh, VRCR will be done again, but provisionalization, temporization needs to be there uh, and needs to be sufficient. That, it, that would make things a lot easier. So in terms of rehabilitation, if there's a sufficient full restoration is key. And as I said before, aesthetically, uh, consideration needs to be made and whether it has a, a, a comfort uh, problem for the patient is also key. Yes, clinically securing a VD and setting the occlusal plane is important. So in terms of order, what needs to come first? Ultimately, oral evaluation and articulation, you need to go back and forth. But I think VD needs to be determined first and then go with to the occlusal plane, because occlusal plane is division of the uh, maxillary and mandula, and there is kind of the inclination on the anterior uh, posterior ear. So uh, occlusal uh, uh, plane needs to be uh, considered in that way. Well, you talk about occlusal plane and then uh, VD, so I was wondering which came first. Yes, occlusal plane is what we uh, learned from school, and that's why I uh, talked about it first. Yes, but clinically, you are saying uh, VD needs to be determined first, and then secondly, occlusal plane. Yes, that's the way uh, in terms of steps to go in clinically, VD and occlusal plane. Well, let me uh, continue. It's about the centric relation record, or what we call CR uh, record. And uh, using tools uh, is very useful. And anterior zig or leaf gauge uh, is uh, what you use. But here, uh, you need a maxillar anterior uh, in existence. And if you have anterior, anterior teeth, using this use tools will be very uh, useful. Now, leaf gauge, I don't think many people would have that. For anterior zig, uh, if you know the concept, it can be easily uh, created. So as you can see, See, you do kind of wax up and you create uh, to cover uh, some uh, upper, upper teeth and you can let the technician create it and one number one and two uh, premolars if that uh, is one or two millimeter gaps uh, that's sufficient and if you uh, have such a sort of um, interior and lateral uh, movement. There is a cross line that comes into contact, and uh, that gap is recorded. So you put something like that pink, and then on the posterior side, the master muscle comes into contact, and the from the spade, the uh, TMJ goes to the anterior superior uh, location, in other words. What is important is not to make it too uh, thick. So using uh, the uh, space, um, you check uh, the bite. And if you have the anterior teeth, uh, using these tools are useful. But the leaf gate, it's very thin. You know, you sort of uh, stack up the 50 uh, thin uh, uh, slides and or layers. So it should not come into contact, but still it should be thin enough. But if it's too thin, then uh, it's flexible and, you know, t uh, patient can bite on it. Then you have to uh, make it thicker. Uh, so leaf gauge wise for the deep bite, in other words, it's not very useful. So using, you can use a tracer, it has its own benefits. And uh, using this type of tools is something you need to get comfortable with. But once you get comfortable with, uh, it's really good. Uh, but what is real, more important is this one. 
clinically practitioner, how you guide the patient for full mud rehabilitation patient, how you can be consistent is very important. In other, uh, as I said, consistency is key. So, chin point guidance or the chin point guidance with anterior jig or the bilateral manipulation is all things you need to think about. So there are different, you know, points you can take into reference. What I mean is there is no one golden rule. There is no one right answer. It's more about for the practitioner, for the same patient, guiding the same consistent positions is more important. So for chin point guidance, it looks very simple, but to the patient, so the head position and hand position is important, and how you close with the thumb is also important. Now, apologies, but again, uh, there is a question about uh, vertical dimension uh, question, so let's answer that. I think uh, from Sosan Duri Clinic, uh, the question came in, so if the uh, teeth are healthy and the wear has been compensated by the protrusion of the alveolar bone, so there is not much loss of VD. So ma while maintaining VD, restoring on with the crown alone, would that stop the overall abrasion or tear, or wear? Well, I think I can see what he, um, the doctor means. So overall abrasion, stopping that, it would contribute to toward that end. Because of the material's properties, the patient, how they do the diet, or the, so he has his own habit. So there could be some material-related uh, wear, but the speed would slow down or stop. And that opportunity uh, can be used also to change the patient diet. So it would contribute. Yes. Thank you. Then I think during a clinic, uh, and Friday, other people have all made comments, and another person said, you know, please keep the series going. And there's another uh, question here from Kuo. It says, when using anterior uh, zig, if you don't um, make it correctly, then it can be pushed toward the uh, backside and guiding the bites that way. So in checking the CR, what is the best way for a um, uh, patient to bite? I think the yes, uh, question is related to CR. I think uh, it's based on the doctor's experience, and I also have that experience too. So in principle, anatomically, if you take a panorama uh, picture, 3D wise, the space and space and soft tissue all makes it difficult to de make a correct determinations. But anterior zig, it should not be convex. It needs to be flat or it's better to be concave. But the thickness, if it's too thin, then it's not useful. So as I said, mechanically in uh, prim no, number one and number two premolars, curing one or two millimeter gap is important. But if the occlusal plane curve is too steep because of wear, then one or two millimeter uh, determination would be uh, difficult. So you need to then consider other things too. The thickness maybe can be adjusted in creating anterior zig. The form should not be, as I said, should not be um, convex. It should be concave. And the thickness needs to be increased to get to the, the right uh, point. So it's not about cutting continuously. You know, you create one and maybe add another material to see what is correct. Another question, if there's a lot of wear, it's really tricky. Yes, that's correct. You know, yes, it takes a lot of efforts and there's a lot of different things to be considered. And as was already mentioned, 10 or 15 years ago, the full mouth uh, patient uh, still requires uh, repairs and continuous monitoring. Yes, you need a lot of repairs. That's correct.
and the patient economically if he's well off uh, it's okay but full mouth rehabilitation is economically also and financially burdensome so but you know if the patient has a lot of wear what to do yes it's really tricky uh, situations now Biba Teno has a question you have to get rid of the reason of wear anterior and posterior or one or two millimeters if it's uh, left then what to do yes that's tricky situation now you can you know have different approaches but the key here is posterior side is the most important so if there's no posterior then implant can help if there is a posterior uh, side in one or two millimeters then you need to increase 3d a lot so if you have posterior and one or two millimeters uh, left because of wear then it's really challenging tricky case because with the posterior loss you have accelerated uh, wear but if that's not case you have the overall wear everything is short it's really challenging the crown length is short uh, doing bridge is uh, tricky because you need to do bridge uh, lengthening yes you have to do uh, lengthening really increase other things yes okay if there's a lot of wear uh, can we use zirconia? Can you talk about materials uh, later or now? I'll do it now. Now, I don't know what to say. Well, let's say it was an experimental. It's because, I mean, two conditions I want to talk about. Now, first, if it's full mouth rehabilitation, you have, you always use the gold because of patient's comfort. And because of gold, you know, VD was increased and gold was used, but the gold has been pushed uh, backwards and there was perforation. So I think, uh, of course, it's different by a patient, but if it's related to implant, if the maxillary posterior side implant to implant contact, then 100% there's an intraocal uh, um, result. So I switched material and then used metal crown, but metal crown also uh, min with the minimal wear, uh, it really becomes flat and it becomes sharp and edgy. But zirconia, in that regard, zirconia itself has, yes, a bit of wear, but has uh, the mo least uh, wear of all the materials. That's what the literature says. But in case of full mouth case, whether that is really true clinically, I cannot say with confidence. I'm actually doing such a case now. Secondly, zirconia, Apologies, but it's really tricky to use for natural uh, teeth because zirconia crown, if you open it up, then the cement part. Now, the cat has really improved and cement space has become really thin. Um, but despite that, resin cement and teeth and zirconia uh, re all relations are disparate so full mouth in terms of long-term results uh, whether we can op opt for zirconia material i cannot say with full confidence yes uh, zirconia another thing is that the fracture you know zirconia also can fracture so we have to be really careful for other questions, maybe uh, I'll ask a bit later. Please continue your lecture. Again, chin point guidance and the bilateral manipulation. Now, for bilateral manipulation, I know uh, some use very uh, diligently, but the most thing to be careful is thumbs are okay, but four fingers, uh, they do not overlap. These four fingers need to be in the angle part. So it not should be broadly um, uh, distanced. That's meaningless. Master muscle, uh, you have to pull it from be, uh, behind. So that's a tip. 
Now, the most important thing is this one. Now, when you do CR record, CR record, why you do that? It's because the reliable, there's no reliable uh, position on the mandibular side. This tear, the teeth has been worn a lot, but there's a lot of um, ugliness or there's protrusion. And so that's uh, really the making the situation tricky. And you should do multiple uh, CR recording. Uh, you know, if you're doing one, it's because of the clinical uh, environment or uh, patient uh, compliance. But so you have to make patient relax as much as possible. Another one, you shouldn't do as soon as he arrives at the clinic. Uh, you have to uh, let the patient be relaxed as much as possible. And the practitioner needs to be consistent, uh, be always consistent. You know, it's just one bite and looks simple, but just for one uh, step, all other condition needs to be fully controlled because of consistency. That's key. Now, this is temporization and sectionally full mouth size. The bites always change and it's um, how you go to the next step. And See in see a record, as I said before, practitioner needs to be uh, training the skill. It looks simple, but it needs to be consistent, always the same for the uh, patient. You just hold it, uh, hold it, and you tr try to control the chin and bite manipulation. Needs to have accurate guidance. So this is simple, but needs to be always accurate and consistent. That's key, key, and that is why you train yourself, and that is how to be considerate of the patient. So how to take CR record? There are different ways. What is the best uh, way for you or the most preferred way for you? And depending on the case, um, do you take uh, it differently? Now, if a dentalist patient, chin point guide is the only option because the limb, uh, there could be be not uh, it can be moving too much so if you, again uh, if it using two is best if you have some teeth on the uh, front side and for the it is these tools are very effective but if you don't have anterior teeth uh, you just use it for the checking purposes because positioning might be uh, tricky VD has decreased and if there's deviation on the mandibular side then the tracer becomes meaningless so you know again if it's edentulous or close to edentulous chin point guidance is what you use and if you have teeth and there's some uh, teeth on the interior uh, side or you can create teeth front and anterior jig is what you should opt for. Now, another question. Now, from Seosan Duri Clinic. So, there is a loss of the posterior support, then implant restoration is what you also need to do. And as a material, PMMA resin uh, looks very attractive. It's easy to use and it's to respond in occlusal changes. What do you think? So using, besides using as a temporary, can you also use that as a final? What do you think? PMA resin. Well, as a permanent, I don't have experience, so I cannot really talk about that. But I believe the question was asked because PMA is the densely uh, packed for the camp purposes, right? Yes, hybrid PMA probably. So for evaluation, it could have uh, meanings, whether it's uh, correct or not. I think uh, the question was asked because it's easy to respond to the uh, crucial changes. So it's very uh, good for evaluation. Yes, uh, using for mailing, right? Yes, uh, I don't have much experience, uh, so I don't use that much. And that's what I, I say then. Awesome that uh, because of 
the uh, financial burden, not many patients go for the formal re rehabilitation. So what do you do? Then I go for removable because it's inevitable. Yes, um, I want to do full mouth rehabilitation, but um, if the patient doesn't have the means, then it's inevitable. Now for a hybrid, you know, where there's uh, teeth loss and you place implant, then uh, the cost goes up a bit. So the patient's very compliant uh, to the evaluation stage, but then stop coming. So, and they sometimes offer denture. And if they go for a uh, denture, then uh, implant is used only uh, in few for support purposes as a IARPD, and that's how I uh, suggest as alternative. So again, the, uh, if financial it's a burden, then you have to you know meet the uh, patient's requirement. But it's really uh, tricky. Yes, please continue your lecture. Now, so through that, you do treatment planning. Let's look at one case and um, finish my uh, lecture. As I said before, diagnostic phase is the most important phase. In treatment uh, planning, if you have a lot of um, experience, it's good. And in diagnosis, if you know much, you can see much better. What I mean is that uh, in the clinical setting, you be rather than you become experienced it's more about you have the base and you made it simple for you and you personalize it for for yourself that's the important thing so uh, i'm putting this slide again because maintenance phase is as important as other phases because after war you may have to make sure the war ha does not happen um, again so all phases are important so this is another case so overall, there's a lot of wear, and there's uh, not much of function, and VD on the posterior side, there is a reverse curve of Wilson. So that's what you can see. So this is after everything kind of aligned, and on the anterior uh, mandibular uh, side, so you see uh, there is not much of the support on the posterior side and after extraction there's a lot of collapse so with the implant this uh, becomes a very tr uh, simple treatment uh, plan and uh, there's a sectional bridge and uh, you can have a full mount maintenance so that is the strength of the using implant so that would be the first um, you know treatment option so this is very textbook uh, procedure. VD and occlusal plane is assessed. Uh, in case of VD, the occlusal side, rather than looking at the space uh, aesthetically, whether there is a uh, sufficient profile, uh, and in the diagnostics, VD occlusal plane is assessed. In the final restoration, you have to recheck again. So again, you use implant here also. So you create temporaries, and then using in the temporization period, you do uh, evaluation, and once everything is fixed, uh, here zirconia was uh, used, and it looks okay. But whether it's really okay, you have to see, because as I said uh, in the beginning. Using, I've been using gold, and it's been 15 or 20 years ago. So I know the res result. And if you see a lot of um, articles, uh, they have 20 years of cases also. So zirconia crown or bridge, rather than um, if it's combined with the natural teeth, how that changes the occlusion and how uh, that needs to be uh, approached is something we have just have to see. Uh, as I said before, different concepts are needed and standards are needed, but one by one, it's not that uh, difficult to uh, grasp. So if you s uh, have your simple uh, protocol in place and stick with it and be consistent, then I do not believe full rehabilitation will be as difficult as you thought.
Well, I believe the lectures are almost over. So, for in case of full mouth rehabilitation, it costs a lot, takes a lot of time also. So, if you get started, then of course for the patients and as well as the doctors, I mean, it takes a lot of um, uh, you know investment in terms of time and other things. So you have to do uh, treatment well, but it also uh, patient compliance and patient aftercare is very important also. So in terms of patient um, education, which is very important, what are things we need to think about? So what are the things patient needs to uh, be educated? Now, as a practitioner, first thing I want to emphasize is that you know, yes, the margin needs to be correct, the crucial plane needs to be also adequate, and it needs to be aesthetic. Let's say all this has been uh, solved. Besides that, uh, after setting, crucial uh, adjustment needs to be not done uh, a lot at the beginning. It should be in short intervals, and uh, patient needs to be recalled many times. So, uh, slow by slow. So, overall, it requires a few months two or three months. So every, uh, I usually record the patient every week. And there you don't do a lot of occlusion adjustment. You need uh, to give a patient time to uh, adapt and comply. So for practitioner, that's how you get the stability in occlusion. And from the patient's perspective, uh, regular, you need to come to the regular recall, and you know what, practitioner check, there should be no problem. So, perio uh, management is key, and if there is uh, uh, issues or you have to extract tooth, then the designs uh, needs to be restorable and you know so overall, you know, regular maintenance is very important, in other words. So after doing full mouse case, uh, myself also, you know, when will the patient come back because there's a, a trouble. So if there's a trouble, if it's long bridge, you have to take everything out. So going section by section is also important. What do you think? Yes, of course, I agree. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for a very good uh, lecture. And because the good lecture was good, we also had a lot of questions. And uh, we have a few more questions here. Now here, uh, ID with the go go. If you have uh, taking the Gothic arch, then uh, you need have a lot of cases where the VD is low because uh, the practitioner did the work and the patient sensitivity has also been uh, reflected. Would that be okay? I think he's talking based on uh, experience, but what you need to check is the, the there's a inclination from the occlusal plane. The plate has been inclined, so there could be some slides. So you need to check for that. So the VD, uh, when you have uh, measurement, uh, when the the mouth is closed, uh, you check what that. So in the closing fat path of the patient, whether it's um, vertical, uh, needs to be checked. Uh, so uh, you need to check that. The besides that, well, the patient sensitivity. Uh, so patients uh, prefer actually lower VD than higher LVD. Yes, that is correct. So two conditions need to think about. So from Sausan Duri uh, Clinic, if the thickness is sufficient, PMMA would that be better? Would not uh, he posted that? So actually, PMMA as a permanent prosthesis, uh, I didn't use uh, for full mouth cases that much, so I cannot really answer that. What about you, Professor Park? Well, I think. I do believe uh, he's speaking from his experience, and that's how, why he can be so specific. I believe in case of hybrid ceramic, so, so when you make a crown, there's a high failure rate. So uh, a lot of um, companies uh, took that out as an indication. But 
Ultimately, it's uh, because of second carriers um, and loosening and wash issue. Because, but implant is a different case. So I think that um, thickness would be meaningful. Yes, it's okay for implant. Okay, and good day asked overall where if the um, do uh, rehabilitation. Uh, when or there's so if there's overall wear and occlusion has been collapsed for fuma rehabilitation, uh, when do you determine uh, to use the implant and where to put the implant? If there is a loss and you place uh, implant and uh, look it on the mock-up, that is not the way to go. Like overall, we the you have the overall blueprint of where you want to do as an end goal, and then you determining the implant position and then you determine whether to go with the bridge or other things so you get the overall uh, end picture in mind and then you do uh, approach uh, six mind section and then another course is if, if overall where and the implant restoration what needs to be considered uh, I talked about uh, five principles stable start disclusion and also there should be no interference these are things you need to think about these five principles but in terms of where I think materials need to be also considered and then uh, Dr. Bae Jung In said, in guiding CR, uh, would I be able to have one day uh, be comfortable in doing CR? Uh, I think uh, he thinks CR is very tricky and challenging. What do you think? It's not easy to be confident about your CR. I think um, indirectly, I can answer with my own recent experience. So there's a old uh, was old lady, and she's been using uh, uh, the uh, the rehabilitation quite uh, okay, uh, but and I thought here recording was good, clinical remounting was that good, also closure adjustment was good, and uh, there's all alignment also done will go good but he, she didn't came uh, a lot um, after that but there was a contact and wear so after a time so what i'm saying trying to say is that the cr positioning don't be stressed or uh, insist on that so it's going to change prosthesis cr is going to be changed on the prosthesis the stand the criteria will uh, the setting will change so you just uh, find the comfortable position at the at one point in time so there is a CR textbook and clinical uh, CR so the textbook and CR is different from the clinical CR yes there is a gap yes that's what I wanted to say Good doctor says thank you for very nice lecture professor Park yes thank you now with that um you know thank you for a lot of good posts and thank you for all the questions and to those that have asked questions we will send you starbucks coffee coupon and our uh, live chatting event continues we have practices uh, on Friday every uh, two weeks and we will have a uh, chatting box in use every time so we look forward to your continued uh, participation thank you very much for a very uh, nice uh, lecture uh, today and uh, before you go anything you want to uh, say in terms of uh, where uh, to your seniors or your colleagues or met well not to my colleagues or uh, seniors but to my uh, juniors I just want to say words of encouragement uh, you know there's a lot of um, advancement in uh, machines uh, there's all different things to learn yes now it's everything digitalized yes all the advancement is good and helpful but as one person as one dentist you don't need to know everything 
rather than then your knowledge and uh, the skills uh, needs to be uh, trained repetitively that's more uh, better for patient so I'm not saying repeat you what you have done, but the skills that you are using now needs to be simplified and personalized. But of course, it needs to have scientific base. So if it's scientific, uh, has a scientific base, then train repetitively so it becomes personalized. So, you know, scientific uh, based approach and train uh, what you think is best way for you so that the knowledge uh, can be uh, transferred to your hands and be helpful to the patient, right? Yes. Uh, again, thank you coming all the way from Gangneung to deliver this lecture. And there were a lot of um, uh, questions and that's why we went beyond the allotted time. So thank you for uh, staying until the end. Uh, thank you, uh, v viewers. I hope uh, this uh, first uh, lecture of 2022 has been helpful to you. You know, with the new year, we created a uh, kind of new set. So we'll do our best to deliver a good series of lectures to you for this year, too. So we look for your continued su continuing support. I hope today's lecture has been helpful to you and uh, if you uh, have uh, not, your question not answered we will uh, answer them in the comment uh, chat box and in the next uh, lecture the second uh, friday lecture we are going to use using implant and general prosthesis for restoration of uh, patients with abrasion or uh, wear. Thank you for joining us and being with us until the end. Thank you very much.